Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys uh, the critical uh, tactical themes that you need to master in order to be able to uh, deal with uh, the tactical portion of the game, which inevitably happens um, even if you're a positional player. So um, the tactical theme we're going to look at today is uh, discovered attack. Okay, uh, let me define it first. A discovered attack is what happens when you move one piece and it uncovers an attack from another piece um, and you can then gain material. What I mean by that is, see in this position on the board, um, we can see that the black queen is unprotected and indirectly our queen is aiming straight at the black queen here, right? So all we need to do is move the bishop out of the way and we're going to gain the queen. So we need to, obviously, if we move the queen out of the way, uh, the bishop out of the way in a way that's not a forcing move, then, of course, they can escape with the queen. For instance, if we just go bishop e2, hoping that we can just take the queen, of course, they'll probably just grab another pawn or something like this, right? You have to do it in a forcing way. So, of course, bishop b5 check. And it's a check, so they must respond to the check. And after they respond to the check, we can take their queen for free. Okay, so that's... A discovered attack. You move a piece out of the way in a forcing manner and they discover that their piece has been attacked. That's why it's a discovered attack. Okay, let's see another example. Uh, okay, this one, as we, we just seen. This one here. Okay, so indirectly we can see um, that this rook is attacking this queen. The way I like to explain it to kids when I teach them is that this piece is going to be the attacker, the rook, the one that is, um, that there's two characters in the, in this, um, in this thing, right? Um, there's the hunter and the attacker. The rook is the hunter. He's obviously the, uh, I mean, the rook is the attacker. When we move the piece, the bishop in this case, the rook will be attacking the queen. So he's the attacker. The hunter is the piece in the front. So the bishop is the hunter. His job is he can move anywhere he wants. And the rook will still be attacking the queen, right? So his job is to hunt for a piece that he can get for free. So where can he go? Go over here? No, there's nothing in that direction. Over here? Yes, there is. We can attack this rook, okay? So his job is to hunt. So he's going to go and hunt that rook, uncovering an attack from the, from the rook, from his own rook. And then we get the rook for free, right? He has to get away with his queen. They, they're faced with the decision of which piece do I want to keep, basically, right? And of course, they want to keep their queen, so he runs away, and we get the uh, rook for free, right? Here's another case. Here, um, what would we do? Okay, we, we can see, uh, this time it's um, it's horizontally, not vertically, um, the attack. So we can see that indirectly our queen's attacking the queen. Again, so we can think of the characters. Our queen is the attacker, our queen will be attacking. The bishop is the hunter, so we need to get away. So what would you do in this position? Okay, the winning move is bishop takes a7. Okay, because it's a check, which means it's a forcing move. And when they get out of check, we take their queen, right? Pretty logical. So takes, we take the queen, right? Um, This one here. Okay, so what have we got? We've got... The we've got some possibilities, like, we see this bishop attacking the queen here, uh, attacking the knight here, uh, and so we can line up, we can't make the discovery work immediately, but a strong player wouldn't take more than a few seconds just to take this knight for free. The reason why is because we take it, and his queen takes back, and again we have a hunter attacker situation, right? The bishop's the attacker, the knight's the hunter, so we're going to hunt for something to make it a forcing move. Yes, knight check. Because it's a check, they must get out of it, so it takes, and we can take the queen again, okay? Another good hunting, uh, another good discovered attack uh, tactic. Okay, so here, what have we got? We've got our bishop attacking the queen indirectly, right? How do we get out of that? So what we can do is move our pawn. The pawn is the hunter. So the pawn will hunt, find something that it can attack, which is the bishop. They must save their queen, and we take the bishop, which lets us gain material, right? Uh, this one, we also have a similar idea. The bishop indirectly attacking the knight over here. And so the pawn is the um, 
the attacker. Up we go. The pawn attacks. Queen saves itself, and we can take the the knight. Right, another one. Mm, okay, so here it's a little bit different. We see the bishop indirectly attacking the white queen. Okay, how to take advantage of this? This is a very realistic type of position too. It looks like it was some type of Sicilian defense um, by the fact that the d pawn and the c pawn are gone, and black because he has his fianchetto bishop. We just need to, the bishop's going to be the uh, attacker, the knight's the hunter. We can knight g4 check, uncovering an attack on the queen. They take it, but they take our queen, right? Next one. Uh, okay, and so this one is the is the previous one. And definitely looks like a dragon Sicilian or something, right? So this is uh, similar to the previous one. It's, it's, in, it's in fact exactly the same, but we're going to learn how to see this tactic in reverse, right? So... In the, in the previous position, we had the white queen on this square, right? And we went knight g4 check and picked up the queen with our bishop. So here we can do that, but we have to line it up. We have to, um, usually a good player is not going to let you just do an attack the, off, the, off, the, off the bat. You have to um, often have to attract them into it or lead them into the tactic. And in this case, we can go rook takes this bishop on d4, um, winning a piece at least. And if the queen recaptures... Now we have that discovered a check, knight g4 check, uncovering the queen. So this is how these tactics work. Bishop takes and bishop takes. It's the same as before. So we've seen the position from, from this angle, where we just go knight g4 check. Um, but it would probably arise from here where we, we take here first, and then knight g4 check. Quite, quite a nice example, actually, of a discovered attack. This one is from white's perspective, so I flip the board back over. And okay, so what have we got? We've got the queen indirectly attacking the queen so we're going to get rid of our knight with a tempo tempo means we do it with a gain of time so check they must escape from check meanwhile we're aiming at their queen takes the queen takes queen right what have we got here uh again uh we see a sort of reversal of this this is black to move and the same old thing happening right uh, the, the black queen indirectly attacking the white queen and we get rid of the black knight somehow uh, it would be a mistake to go what it would be a mistake to go knight takes bishop check because they can just recapture with their queen and save their queen at knight takes three check and we're going to get their queen right moves and takes the queen okay so a lot of these examples learning a lot of these types of patterns is really beneficial for your chess because you learn to see them very quickly again okay the black uh rook indirectly attacking the rook got to get rid of the bishop somehow uh, with a forcing nature of, of course as we know if we move they'll just take us but if we move with force they can't take us so bishop takes h2 check takes and rook takes so we've gained some points and this knight's over here is pretty crap as well but it's not relevant okay so what about this one white's move okay uh, this is pretty obvious actually um the rook is attacking this knight indirectly so we take they take and we take the free knight on c6 that was that's pretty easy really because you'd probably take that anyway uh, okay this position uh rook attacking the bishop we will just go bishop takes pawn check uh, why wouldn't we just go bishop takes pawn check okay well it says uh bishop c7 the the official answer which is pretty good because the the hunter which is the bishop hunts the rook and then next move we'll, we'll be able to take the bishop but i think it's just as good obviously just to just take just to take this pawn with check and we can still take this right it's yeah it's it's in fact probably better so that's a flawed puzzle but whatever who cares um okay again we have this situation so the bishop's a hunter let's look for something in both directions nothing over there because he'll just take it with his queen over this way yes we can go here on f4 bishop f4 Hunting that rook over here, and the queen must move, and we swap, and what white wins the exchange. Okay. Uh, this one, this one is an extremely common tactic. When we have the rook on the d file attacking the queen, and there's a bishop in the way, extremely, extremely common that we can just go bishop takes h7 check, and king must take. I'm going to show you that theme in the next game actually. Rook takes, and we have one material. Okay. Uh, and here we have a similar thing. Rook attack indirectly. Move the bishop here to make a check. Here and take that. Pretty easy. Hmm. 
This is pretty cute, actually, this one. Look, indirectly attacking here. We need to put the bishop somewhere, so we go bishop back to here. And we win, because the queen's attacked, and we're threatening this back rank checkmate, too. So, takes, and we take the queen, and it's over. Um, pretty nice, pretty nice. Uh, what? Okay, okay, I see. So this is uh, the previous position, but um, again, it's uh, taken back a little bit more. So bishop e7, attack the rook, and if they come here, then we have this bishop b4 move, same as in the game we just seen. So remember, takes, takes, okay, so nice, nice. Uh, again, we have this queen on the d file somewhere, and we can get rid of the bishop and get a free queen because it's uh, unprotected, right? So bishop h7, check, king must, oh, knight, no, something must take, and queen takes queen. Um, so keep this idea in mind with the the black queen or the enemy queen on the d file where we get rid of this bishop and um, check uh, on h7 because I'm going to show you guys a game now that really uh, emphasizes that. So this is a game I played the other day against a guy on chess.com called, uh, what's his name? Captain Planet. He's about 2080 or something. The game went like this, knight of three. Just got to remember this game from memory, but I think I do. D5, C4, D4, E3. I'll, I'll quickly go through the opening. This is a pawn sacrifice. And B4, the point is pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes, D4, and white gets a big center. Uh, he went C5, which is a good move because he's countering my center straight away. And if I take like an idiot, uh, he will swap queens and just easily get his pawn back with a better position. So uh, C5. Taking the pawn is stupid, but attacking his knight is good. I've had this position several times before. If they go knight c6, sometimes I push forward and you see the knight can only go backwards, which is pretty good. Um, that's why he went knight a6. But now that is a knight on the edge, right? So I went bishop d3, knight f6, castles, e6, knight c3, bishop e7, bishop b2. I like that diagonal. Castles. Uh, I went king h1. Uh, it looks like a funny move, but it's useful because sometimes if there's captures on d4 or some queen b6 moves in the future, uh, my king can be in check. It's a good little, uh, mm, good little prophylactic move, just tucking the king away so that nothing can happen to him later. Uh, on because this f pawn's moved. Okay, so um, he plays the rook e8. I play queen e2. He plays knight c7, recentralizing the knight, which seems not bad. I play rook a d1, and now. At the cost of a pawn, my pieces are beautiful. The bishops are sort of aiming towards the king side. Knights are flexible, rook strong, nice files. And I'm pretty happy. He plays a6, which I think is a mistake. I think he wants to immediately lash out and chip away my center. Either that or play, maybe play b6, bishop b7. Um, but now I have the chance, <clears throat> as we've seen in the previous example of the discovered attack, we have the rook on the same file as his queen, and the bishop access to the h7 pawn. So I play d takes c5. Right, um, and this can also, the, you guys that um, really care about pawn structure, um, this this can show you that pawn structure, uh, if if you're gonna have extremely active pieces as compensation, it's not, not a big deal. You can see here that I have this isolated pawn here, doubled isolated pawns here, isolated pawn here, but my pieces are all beautifully active. And so that that's the big difference. And okay, so uh, if the point is now, if he goes bishop takes c5, now that I've taken that, of course, I have this rook attacking his queen, just like we've seen in the previous uh, tactics puzzles. So I can go bishop takes h7, check, something takes, and then rook takes queen, right? And this guy is, you know, he's well over 2,000, his rating, so he's seen that that was coming and went bishop d7. And now that he's uh, a little bit on the defensive, it's time to launch forward. If you get your opponent on the defensive, it's sort of like a boxer when uh, you, you see a boxer sees that his opponent's dizzy. Uh, you don't go over and let him have a rest, right? You cut, you start smashing in with as many combinations as you can, try to finish the guy off. So now uh, this guy can't get his pawn back. He 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 ducks out of my tactic, and I start launching forward. Ninety five is a good move because okay, it's looking at this pawn, it's looking at the bishop, and it opens up the f file for my rook. Immediately, um, I give I've, I'm given the opportunity for a tactic. He plays queen c eight, and now I want to go knight takes bishop. And then queen takes, and then bishop takes h7 check, repeating that tactical theme. But uh, the point is that if I go knight takes d7 straight away, he goes knight takes d7, and it doesn't work, right? So um, even that might, that still might be good though. Something like bishop takes h7 check, king takes, 
queen h5 check, king here, queen takes g7, uh, f7 check, king here. And then, okay, there's a million winning move, like rook here, followed by rook h3 mates, or knight d5, threatening bishop g7 type of stuff, you know. It's crushing anyway, so everything's winning. But, um, amazingly. So, anyway, he played bishop d7, knight e5, queen c8, and I played rook takes f6. It's a good move because now the knight doesn't defend d7, right? So you play bishop takes f6 and I play knight takes d7. And here's the point. If queen takes d7 now, I can go bishop takes a7 check. And that discovered attack is winning. So he didn't do that. Uh, first he took on c3. I take back and he saves his rook. Again, if he goes queen takes knight, I just take here and take his queen. So he plays rook d8 and I improve the knight to a beautiful square. And he goes queen c8. Now, this is an important moment for you guys. A lot of people would take this rook now, but the rook's crap, right? It can't move anywhere, so why would you take it? I'm going to leave my knight, which completely uh, freezes his queen. His queen can't move, and the rook's doomed anyway. So the most important feature of this position, from my view, is the bishop's pointing at the at the king side. So a logical move is queen h5, uh, threatening just queen check, queen check, and mate coming, right? So queen h5 is a good move. This guy um, couldn't see a way out of it. Uh, because, you know, if you go something like h6, I got queen g4, threatening mates, and uh, he falls apart, basically. Um, so, after queen h5, he plays rook takes d3. And, okay, I take back, of course. And now I'm a piece up, and so he plays, it's funny, his rook's attack, so he plays rook a7. Really funny, because I wasn't intending to take this anyway, and I still have huge mobility of my pieces but you've seen that uh, the discovered attack theme so i'll quickly show you the end of the game although it's not relevant to the discovered attack motif anyway so queen g5 threatening mate on g7 uh if he goes knight uh e8 i was intending just rook d8 but one of my students uh when i showed him this game today showed me a nice uh variation bishop takes g7 knight takes g7 rook check queen takes queen takes queen he must block with his knight. We take that. He moves his king. And then queen here. <laughs> and we get the last piece, which is trapped on a7, which would be very funny. But um, instead, uh, bah, 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 bah. he didn't go knight e8 here. He went f6. And of course, I can just take that. Bishop takes f6 check because of this pin. And he's in desperate trouble. He played knight e8. Again, I can play either my student's idea. Bishop takes g7, knight takes rook d8, or I can just play rook d8 straight away, or I can play as I did in the game, rook d7. And the threat is rook takes g7 with mate coming. Um, and he's just completely paralyzed. He resigned in this position, but would have been really funny if he played a move like g6, avoiding the mate, because um, the very amusing position after bishop e5, of course I can just go queen a6 and mate the guy, but bishop e5 is a funny move because You'll see now that, okay, again, I have this bishop that cuts all of his knight squares, so the knight is trapped on the edge of the board. Meanwhile, his queen is trapped, and there's no squares that it can go to, right? And meanwhile, his rook's trapped and can't go anywhere, and so all of his pieces are trapped, and I'm just going to walk in leisurely and checkmate the guy. So a very instructive game, and um, things started going bad for him right around here when I had the opportunity to go d take c5, threatening this discovered attack so discovered attack very powerful tactic uh, i'm going to show you guys more tactics uh, very soon uh, but discovered attack i wanted you guys to get a good grasp of and, and then i showed you an instructive game uh, one of my games where i used this tactic to great effect or at least i used the ghost of this tactic he had to respond he was good enough to see it but there was stu still no way out so beautiful game mm, it's not that beautiful actually it's okay the, the guy shouldn't have allowed d take c5 but maybe he was obsessed with pawn structure or something i'm not sure he's a decent player though I think he's beaten me once and I've beaten him five times or something like this. But um, pretty good game. Hope you guys liked it. Uh, keep an eye out for those discovered attacks. Tomorrow I'll probably uh, show you guys a video about pins or another very useful uh, tactical theme. But until then, I'll see you soon.